verse 11, Ephesians uh, 1, um, verse 11, if I'm not mistaken. 2 and 11.
ain't looking at right. And God knows when we change. You can you can fool some of the people some of the time. Most of the people most of the time you can fool them up. None of the time. So God knows when you have changed. And the way it, that some people know that you change is the is the way that you walk, the way that you talk, the way that you live, and the way that you give. You got how say you know that how how should men know that you are my disciple? Oh, by the stroke of your love. And that love does not just does not come just out of your mouth. Love is a verb of love. Love is a verb and it's an action. And, it, and you can't say that you love me and don't show me that you love me. Mm-hmm. And here the, the circumcision is not made by the hands of men. The circumcision is when God circumcises or uh, circumcises your heart. But then he goes with the 12 and says, you know this. Oh, sure. 
which you call the circumcision in the flesh by hands. Listen, we were not citizens of the Lord. If, 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 if y'all don't, don't think I'm vulgar, the Bible tells us we, 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 were, we, were, we were bastard children. We 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 not want it. But the sin that no testament since Jesus came to die for all mankind. Listen, I y'all might y'all might y'all might y'all might not believe anything I said, but that's fine. That we was without Christ. But yet Christ came to die for all mankind. The angels from the commonwealth. The commonwealth is is, is that that dwelling place, that the commonwealth of Israel, that common place. We were the Jews were the, the chosen people. We we weren't that common. We weren't in that common. We weren't in that uh, region. We weren't in that that nation. We weren't that people. We were alien. We were outside of. If I say the real, we were outside of the circle. But God wanted us to be. Listen, He said that we were from the common West, Israel and strangers from what the covenant. The covenant was given to Abraham and his, and, and, and his people and his, and his descendants. We were not descendants of Abraham. Everybody want to remember, everybody remember when we, uh, we were the first uh, in, 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 in Ephesians, when uh, we, we, are, we are not, we are Abraham's descendants and we have we not, when we have, when we have not, and he said, if you were the seed of Abraham, you would not have killed Jesus. Anybody remember that, that scripture? No, I don't want to talk to them. He said, we are, we, are, we, are the, we are the descendants of Abraham. If you had been the descendants of Abraham, you would have known who you had hung on a tree. Look. You correct. The aliens of the covenant and the promise. We didn't receive the promise, but Abraham and the descendants did. He said, we had no hope. No, 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 we had no hope. We had, we were without God. We were in this world all by our sin. Huh? It, 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 the descendants of Abraham, that is the lineage where Jesus came from. He had to be on that side. And we were the other folk. Yeah, the other folk. You know, when you go into town, you got a certain group of people, you got another person. We were them folk. We were the people that were, that were walking in the town. We were them folk. We were the ones that, 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 that lived in the high ride, we were ones in the, in the ghetto. We were them folks. We were the ones that lived in the, in the nice rich place. We were from the country. We were the other folks. If y'all follow me, what I'm saying? We were the rich folks. We were the other folks. And here we are outside of the circle of Christ, the other folks, the commonwealth. We were those strangers. We were those bastard children. We were those, but yet, Jesus died for all of us. And you look at this because our hearts were circumcised through him. One more. Thirteen. I like this. If you look at it, 12, it said, at time, at, at that time, from my time to pass, uh, before, uh, the beginning. But what does it say in 13? But, now, I like that, but now, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. Y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? I once was in darkness, now I'm in the light. I once was a sinner, but now I'm saved. I must be here by myself. But now in Christ Jesus, Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. If it had not been for the blood that he shed, we still would be lost in this world of sin. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, none of us would be here today. And all the cause of his blood, there's healing power in his blood. A saving power in his blood. There is deliverance in his blood. There is grace and mercy in his blood. 11 through 13. That's a gift. Only, only thing I 
I, I want to add is um, just remember that this, you and you said the last part perfectly by the blood of Jesus. Um, this is God reconciling. And I don't want people to think it was just Gentiles who were uncircumcised. There were Jews who were uncircumcised. But but the thing that you you got to remember here is God reconciling us was not just for certain people or certain individuals. And when we when we try to separate God and we do it very well. It's called our denominations. This is a passage where you can see God does not separate. He's telling you this, this reconciliation was for the Jews and the Gentiles. If you go to Galatians 3 and 28, it'll tell you what Paul told them about the Jews and the Gentiles and the free and the slave and the men and the women and all that. But this is a passage that really leads to the simple fact that Jesus was here for everybody. And you, you said that, but Paul follows it up when he ends this passage in verse 13 when he says, And this has been done by the blood of Christ. And who was Christ's blood for? It wasn't for just the Jews. Mm -mm. It wasn't for black, white, blue, green. It was for every sinner. So I'm going to just say everybody. He died for sins, our sins. And if you didn't have one, you would have been the one dying. So understand that, that this gift, this, this blessing, this reconciliation... It starts off saying formerly. Remember that formerly you were. So that means your past was different, but your present and future are changed. And, and, and that's that's what happens, and that's what happened when we came to Christ. When he washed us, we change. We can't be the same. So yeah, we were separate from Christ. But if you wanted to be a citizen and you was telling them about alien, alienation, if you're on the outside, if you don't know Christ, you're an alien. Okay. But get to know him and you won't be. He can mark you. And he will mark you. So you'll know that you belong in his family. And the doorway for the family is open to everybody. He didn't. He didn't stop it. So I always uh, that that's something we always should look at because we set up the church, our church, our, our own churches, as this one, that one, this one, this one, this one, do this, this one, do that. If you notice, it doesn't say that here. He just reconciled everybody. He is for everybody. You can't tell me anything about Jesus Christ that's only for your denomination. Yes. So I, I, I always like to keep that in mind because we play weakness in denominations. We play separation and denomination and we play segregation and denominations we can't unify because we stuck on man and and that's not what the church of Christ is about that's not what Jesus' church is about Jesus is the head everybody else is a part of it but it's the same church and he is the head of it and we, we really got to start recognizing this because Satan is picking us apart just by going against each other. Oh, they believe in this. They believe in that. They don't do this. I do that. They, can't, they don't have this gift. If you don't have this gift, you can't belong to this church. All those things are false. So th this passage is big on that end. 
and understand that none of this is our work again. So y'all, I, you, whoever ain't got nothing to boast on. This ain't no bragging rights for you unless you bragging on the cross. And that's the only thing you're supposed to boast on. And you can see it in 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So as much as you want to judge me, tell me what I am, who I am, what I can do, what I can't do. You ain't Christ. Your blood ain't shed me and saved me. So don't judge me. You got a plank in your eye and I got a plank in mine. I'm still trying to get wood chips out of mine. You probably still trying to get wood chips out of yours. And, and, and ain't that how we end up tearing down one another anyway? And, and, and then I, I got to throw it at you. Is that Christ-like then? Because Christ lifted us up. He would correct us and lift us up, but he wouldn't tear you down where you didn't want to be around him. Matter of fact, he was so good that he had crowds following him. Even to the point where they were hungry. So that that passage right there always gets to me because the church has truly got to get together. If we circumcise in Christ, we should be acting like it. I don't care if you got whatever cut off of you. If your heart ain't right, you ain't right. If you ain't doing the work of God, you, you ain't right. I didn't say you won't fall. I didn't say you won't have some problems. But you got to be doing his work. And his work is not to divide his body. We are to unite his body. Be on one accord like the apostles were. If, if we could get on one accord, do you know how much work we could do in this world? How much power you have. Yeah. If 12 of them could get on one accord and do great things, could you imagine? Just food for thought. Just food for thought. <laughs> Moving on to... Um... Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, we, we need to think on that. Um, when you get to verse 14 and 15, 16, because they all run together, it says, For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. Uh-oh, what I just said. <laughs> for, for he himself is our peace. Period. That's it. That You... You, you may think you have some peace in the world because you might uh, be well to do and you might not be going through things here that others are going through who aren't well to do. But understand, that's not peace. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. See, see, the peace that we needed was to have that peace with the Lord. And if you got that peace with the Lord, guess what? These Jews and Gentiles needed peace. But if you go back to his two greatest commandments, it speaks of love because of peace. Yeah. And man has to have peace with God. And if you have peace with God, how can you not have peace with your brothers and sisters that you can see? Yeah, see, the, the Bible tells on itself constantly. 
If you ever want verification, vindication, the Bible will tell you. It, it, it ain't no secret. You have to have peace with the Lord. And if you have peace with the Lord, how can you not have it with your brother and sister? But but, but see, now that, that leaks into what he was saying here. Because he said, who has made the two groups one. It didn't say he made the two groups in the 15 or 25 or 30. Because, you know, we got Roman Catholic, Catholic, Baptist, Southern Baptist, full gospel, half gospel, AME, African AME, Southern Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran. We could just go on and on and on. But right here, it tells you he made the two groups. That's the Jews and the Gentiles. That means the ones that he had and the ones that didn't know him, all of us, because this is inclusive. Sister Michelle, you know if you in school teaching math, this is when you say this is that union. And this is the, the union of these two groups. And the destroying barrier was the fact that both groups didn't have Christ and they were hostile. I, I, I got to knock this barrier down because both of your groups need Christ and some of the Jews didn't have Christ. Don't, don't think it was just the Gentiles. Both of them. And the work that Jesus was doing for us and the fact that he went and died on the cross for us for salvation was for everybody. This wasn't a, a, a tit for tat. So there's nothing that separates us, this hostility between us and them or the Jews and the Gentiles, however you want to say it. Because Jesus broke the barrier down and he tells you, that was his purpose. He, he, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, it was in his flesh that this was all done. Jesus did all this. See, excuse me, the Jews and the Gentiles had a problem because the Gentiles, they said, wasn't keeping the laws. But guess what? Neither were the Pharisees. Neither were the Jews. You, you going to add extra burdens to me to say that's how I get faith. But you do it. You can't do what you're trying to give me. You, you can't stand the test and trial, but you're going to give it to me and make it harder for me. Y'all know what they said about that millstone. See, hey, and they was trying to get Adam to keep him away. Even the fact that they talked about you had to be circumcised. Remember, circumcision was an outward appearance. Jesus was looking for an inward change. And if you really got technical and to the point and nitty gritty, when you go back to Abraham, he was not a Jew. So you took a custom from Gentiles, used it for the Jews, and tried to push the Gentiles away by using what they did first. Yeah. See, so you, 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 in other words, Jesus was saying, y'all messing up. I'm actually here for everybody. I just came into y'all. But, but I'm here for everybody. So, so Jesus is, Jesus is, Paul is saying this right here about this. This is his purpose was to create in himself. As he says, Jesus' purpose in himself. When Christ came here, his intent and purpose was to create one family in Christ Jesus. When he says that one new humanity, he, he's not saying 
He was getting ready to change colors of people. He wasn't getting ready to change how their language goes. He was changing their spirit to understand that they are all one in Christ. It didn't matter what language you spoke because he gave the apostles the ability to tell them in their own native tongue about Christ. And they can go tell somebody else. But God was making sure that we understood that when Christ came, his goal was to change humanity and take them from the two conflicting groups into one new group. And when you did this, when he did that, it brought about peace. And it should always bring about peace. There is no way disciples of Christ should be fighting each other, hating on each other. Because we ain't the ones in charge in the first place. You know, we, 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 we say preacher, pastor, teacher, whatever, but there's only one teacher. We, we get to share the word. We get to get gifted with the word. The Lord puts the word in us. The Lord says study to show thyself approved. And we do that, but it ain't our word. That's it. It's his word. Don't ever get a fat head because you got some knowledge about God. It's about sharing that knowledge. And remember, it's about God. It ain't about you. So these two groups was to come together and become one body in Christ Jesus. And then he said that. And in one body to reconcile both of them. It was going to be his body to reconcile both. You didn't need any other body. You didn't have another sacrifice. You didn't have any blood. You didn't have anything else that could do this except Jesus going through and to the cross. Nobody else could do it. Y'all saw the gap we had from the Old Testament to the New Testament. You could have burned heifers, goats, cows. You could have done grain offerings, sacrifices. It was not working. We couldn't pay the price. We couldn't even get it right when the Lord told us how to do it. So, there was no, you know, they, they, they used to say there were the, the, the disciples and there were, and I, I say disciples, I don't say Christians, so if y'all say Christians, that's fine. There were the disciples, there were the Jews, there were the Gentiles. No! It was just one body in Christ. That doesn't mean that there weren't people that weren't in Christ. But the family that Christ came down here for, the humanity that Christ came to change, they were to be one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3.20. Anybody got that verse? Galatians 3.20. 28. That's it. You're not one in Jeffrey. You're not one in Michelle. You're not one in Timothy. You one in Christ Jesus. Don't be fooled. It ain't, it ain't about us. We couldn't change. We couldn't reconcile ourselves. We barely can change our shoes sometimes. We just push on the back of the heel to take it off. So, so understand, this is God working again. This bragging, this humanity, 
This is about God's work and what was done at the cross for us. And he was creating this in himself. See, you, you got to, and when you read Paul, Paul speaks heavily on the work of Jesus at the cross. Paul understands the gospel, but he understands just how important Christ's work was at the cross and how it continues to be. And we have to understand that because we needed this blood. See that the this is when when we change over this body stops fighting against them and our spirit starts winning and Paul recognizes this. And, and, and Paul is not ashamed to tell you about it. That one body is the body that we needed. And what did that one body do? It put death to that hostility. That hostility didn't exist. He put death through it to it. Jesus was making sure that we all would be one. If, if you remember back in John, was it John? I want to say it was in, 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 in the gospel of John. John was praying, or Jesus was praying in John. And um, he said something in the lines of this. He wanted us to be one. If you ever listen to Paul speak, he speaks of what is said in the gospel and uses it. If Galatians 3.28 tells you we are one in Christ Jesus, understand that Paul knew that Christ had said that. And this is understandably God's plan for us. So this ain't God's temporal plan. This is God's eternal plan for us. To be one. We a family. Yes, sir. This is this is how we become one in Christ Jesus. If you are racist and say you love the Lord, you a liar. See, I, I, I watch some things in this world and I've been to the Bible Belt a few times and I saw some hostility based on my color. Maybe that ain't the Bible Belt. Because the Bible will tell them that you don't do that. That's your brother and sister who you're supposed to love. So maybe the Bible Belt ain't the, the true statement. And, and I don't want to hear what we read the Bible. Yeah, but we need you to act on the Bible. Yes, sir. And, and, and don't let me, and I ain't just picking on the Bible, but I, I'm talking about anywhere you go. We, we see these things. How can we not come together and worship Christ? Not, not worried about the color. Worried about the spirit and giving God praise. That's it. We, we struggle with the flesh. And when we become the citizens of Christ, we don't look at the flesh. We walk in the spirit. How can we allow ourselves to be caught up in God's blessing to put us in whatever vessel he put us in? Please understand, that is the whole problem of the world. I see what you look like, and I mark you. You're too fat, you're too skinny, your hair too short, I don't like that color. We are so visual, and we skip right over the spiritual. Understand... 
Nobody is above anybody. Matter of fact, if you if you really want to be a disciple, you better learn to serve folk. Ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> So, <laughs> so let's let's go into seventeen and eighteen. I think we are we we at seven o'clock. I don't want to run us over. <laughs> I, I apologize. Well, you want to catch seventeen and eighteen up next week. We'll do Ephesians 2, 17 and on. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, we thank you all for uh, participating. Do we have any, any comments from anyone? Just a great lesson. I enjoyed it all, especially when he and Pastor Lyons trying to go, go do a little, he want to be, when the teacher want to be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. If you don't find someone to laugh about, you'll find a million things to cry about. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that was a great lesson, as always. Enjoy it. Amen. He was.